Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the shop. So, I'm going to do a saw sharpening video today. Now, you may recognize this saw. We uh, refurbished it, cleaned it up, cleaned the plate um, in a previous video. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Um, I have removed the handle once again so we can put it into our saw vise. Now, before we get started, I gotta go over what kind of tools you're going to need to sharpen your own saws. Now, not every single one of these is absolutely necessary. I have a uh, saw vise. I bought this on eBay and cleaned it up and fixed it. But uh, to be perfectly honest, my very first saw vise was nothing more than a two by four that I had uh, sawn in half and chamfered the top edges and I just clamped it to my bench, you know, sticking the plate between it and that worked out just fine for me. But, uh, you know, this is nice to have. It definitely uh, works better and is, is meant for it. I can also uh, adjust the angle on the vise if I wanted to add slope to it, which is a nice feature. Uh, next, uh, you need some saw files. Uh, you need a mill file. This is just a flat file, and this is going to be for jointing the top edge of the teeth. Then, we have an entire set of triangular saw files. And I'll pull out the biggest one so that it's easiest for you to see. But this is a number seven regular, and they go all the way down to number four inch, uh, double extra slim, uh, which are really tiny for very small teeth, like dovetails. Uh, and the size you're going to need is all dependent on the number of teeth in the saw. Now for this, which was an eight teeth per inch saw, we're gonna be using a number six extra slim. Uh, I'd also recommend getting some handles. I turned these, but you know, uh, without the handle, they have kind of a sharp point on the back. And if, the, if it catches, you could end up stabbing yourself in the palm, which is no fun. Uh, but you don't have to have fancy ones. You can buy them. Or you can just take, this was uh, just a piece of two by four that I, I cut into piece into a small square, drilled a hole in and, and shaved it down a bit and this works fine. So it doesn't need to get super fancy. And you definitely don't need a full set. If you know what you need, you can just buy one file. Although if you plan on doing a lot of saw filing, having a full set is kind of necessary. Next, you're going to probably need, at some point, a saw set. Now, this is uh, a tool that sets the... that will adjust the, the, the bend in the tooth to give you your um, kerf amount. And you're probably going to need two different sizes, one for larger saws and one for smaller saws. Lastly, I find this very helpful. This is just a cheap little magnifying head strap that I got from Harbor Freight. Um, when you get down into the smaller, like dovetail sized saws, uh, the teeth can get very difficult to see and it can become quite a strain on your eyes. So having a magnifier available is, uh, a big help to see those little tiny teeth. Now, before we can get into the actual saw sharpening, I need to talk about tooth geometry. Now, this was a cross-cut saw, and I'm just going to load this into the saw file, saw vise. All right, so you have three angles on a saw that give it its tooth pattern. And I'm going to grab the biggest saw for the first angle, uh, the biggest file for the first angle, so you can hopefully see this. But the first angle is your rake angle, and that is the angle in which you hold the, you rotate the file. 
and that is going to give you, I, I'll, I'll put up some, uh, a, hopefully a screenshot of a good picture that'll define uh, all the different angles for you, but you have your rake, all right, that's the rotation of the file. Then you have your fleam angle, which is going to be this angle in relation to the perpendicular to your saw plate. And then the last angle is your slope, which is going to be this angle on the plate. Now, I don't generally do a whole lot with slope because it's not, it's, it's not a big angle that you need to worry about too much. <clears throat> your rake angle is dependent on what kind of sawing you're planning on doing. Um, for rip cut saws, the rake angle is very steep. And for cross cuts, it's much more relaxed. If you can understand cross cut filing, then you can get rip cut no problem. With the fleam angle on a cross, on a, sorry, on a rip cut saw, it's always 90 degrees to the plate. Uh, almost always, most of the time. 90 degrees to the plate and it's just each tooth saw one at a time down the line. With cross cut, however, you have your fleam angle and you're, take, you're, you're concentrating on your rake and your fleam at the same time and you're filing every other tooth in this direction then you turn flip the saw plate and you file every other tooth in the opposite direction and the difference between a cross cut saw and a rip cut saw is on a rip cut saw you're ripping with the grain and you want to file these teeth more like chisels so that they're kind of chiseling out along the grain as you are pushing the saw. With a cross cut, cross cut is going across the grain. So each one of these teeth is filed more like little knife points, severing the fibers on either side of the cut and then kind of chipping, you know, crack, breaking out the waste in between. Now this saw was not too bad, so we're not gonna have to do any like major recutting of the teeth. Um, the first thing we need to do is we're going to joint the teeth. And this is just a 90 flat, hold your file flat along the top. And this is going to make sure that all the teeth all the way down the plate are even and in the same line. Now you can buy tools for this. I just give it my best shot at holding it flat. light with your touch you don't need to go too heavy and you just want to do it until you see a little shiny spot on top of each tooth and that'll tell you that you have a flat on the top of each one now that we have a flat on the top of each tooth we're going to start filing in the teeth and getting rid of those flats. Now what you want to do when you're clamping your saw in is you want to bring this down as close to the jaws of the vise as possible, leaving just enough tooth showing so that you can do your filing actions. Uh, too much plate sticking up is going to cause a lot of vibration in the plate. Um, so, <clears throat> now, before we can do this, we need some way to make sure that we're maintaining our rake angle and our fleam angle at the same time. Now, you can buy fancy little doodads that, that fit onto the end of your file. Um, but I've, you don't need it. What I'm going to do is I have just a little scrap block of wood and we're gonna drill a hole in the center. Then with an angle gauge, we're going to mark 
our fleam angle at the hole and then stick the file into that hole and that will help us hold the angle and as long as the block maintains flat, we'll know that the fleam angle is set properly. Let me drill a hole. All right, so my hole goes all the way through, so uh, it doesn't need to be any bigger than the tip of the saw file that you're gonna fit in here because you're gonna jam it in there and kind of create a triangular hole to hold this file. Um, but drilling all the way through means that you can now use each side for different angles in the future. And with cross cut saws, you want your fleam angle, uh, sorry, your rake angle. Uh, you want your rake angle to be uh, somewhere between 12 and 16 degrees, often 90. Uh, I, it, it, it depends on whether you're doing hardwoods or softwoods as to what angle you want to set. But uh, I do a little bit of both, so I kind of want to set it right in the middle of that. I'm going to go for 14 degrees. So we'll set this for 14 degree angle. I'm gonna mark this right through one part of the hole. Now when we set this, I'm gonna make sure that I set the flat of one side right on that line. All right. Now I've created kind of a triangular hole, or at least some little nubs that will register the file each time I use it. And it'll hold the fleam angle at 14 degrees, provided that the block is flat uh, rake angle. So for the fleam angle, you can print out these uh, little printouts of angles uh, I, I'll leave a link to where I got these from, but uh, I, have, I have multiple angles here. I have 25, 20, 5 degrees, 35, and 30 degrees. Again, the angle depends on whether you're doing hardwoods or softwoods, but I'm shooting for something somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to use the 20 degree template and I'm just gonna lay that down here and it gives me kind of a sight guide to hold my angle too. So to start filing, we want to identify which direction. We're, we're filing one edge of the tooth. So, starting to in the back here and we're just giving it a couple of files and then we'll move on to the next one soft filing can get quite loud and annoying so And do every other tooth. Now, as I'm going down, I'm looking at where I have sawn, and I want to make sure that I take off a little bit of the flat spot on the top. Not all of it, because we'll take off the other half when we're going back the other way. And I'm trying to keep my strokes about the same number, about the same strength. I'm not pushing down too hard. I let the file do most of the work. But we're going to, we're going to be doing these same teeth a couple of times until those flat spots are completely gone. And that is when our saw will be sharp. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but you can tell where I've filed and where I haven't because of the shiny spots and the dull spots. Now, if we were working with a new plate, um, having a black Sharpie 
or even some uh, Dicom blue um, paint would help us a lot there as well to kind of distinguish where we filed and where we haven't. Because this is an old saw, there was some rust and discoloration in here, so it's quite clear to me anyway where I have filed. But we're going to continue on all the way down the plate to the end, and then we will flip it around and do the other side. Another important thing is you want to try and keep your strokes even and long. Use the entire file each pass. That way you're not wearing out one spot on the file. And uh, these files will wear out very fast. Um, you'll generally only get, I don't know, it depends on how hard you're sharpening uh, or how much metal you're removing, but Cutting teeth on a new saw, you'll, you'll go through one of these edges per saw. Um, just giving it a quick sharpen, you could probably get three or four off of uh, each corner of this file. As you go, you also want to shift the saw plate down because you only want to saw, uh, you only want to file the teeth that are within this vise. Otherwise, it, it will start shaking and vibrating and, and you won't get a good cut. Like nails on a chalkboard, huh? All right, so now we've done all of the teeth, every other tooth in one direction. I've turned the saw plate around, and now we're ready to go back and do every other tooth in the opposite direction. Now, as you're going along, you may notice that you have larger flat spots on one side than the other. And what you want to do is you want to try and focus on the side with the larger flat spot to keep the teeth evenly spaced. All right, so I completely messed that up for anyone paying attention. Uh, it's been a while since I've done cross-cut uh, filing. <clears throat> you do not flip the saw plate around. Uh, you, after you filed in this direction, then you change to this direction and do every other tooth. Um, so now I'm going to do a, a light rejointing and try and fix my mistake. Okay, take two. Um, I, I'm leaving this mistake in there intentionally instead of fixing it with some fancy camera editing to make it look like I know everything about everything. Um, and I'm doing that intentionally because I want you to know that there, there is no mistake that you cannot fix with little effort. So we're gonna go back and try and recut all these teeth and uh, just, I, I rejointed everything and we're just gonna start at the beginning. Uh, oh well, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate because I've, <clears throat> I've worn this file down pretty far. So, you know, this probably will not be good for any more sharpenings. Now, I've got all the way down on one side in this direction. I'm going to reorient myself and go all the way down in this direction now. Without turning the saw plate this time. Alright, so now that I have finished the jointing and I've gone through and I've filed all the teeth, paying very close attention to the flats and my tooth geometry and making sure that I did it properly this time instead of talking to the camera, uh, we have fixed the teeth. And I can tell that they're nice and sharp because when you touch them, uh, they grip the skin very slightly. So. We are going to do the final cleanup on the saw. And for this, 
we're going to count our strokes. All right, however many strokes you make, you're going to make them all the way down and back again. Now, um, I'm just going to do one because I've done quite a bit of work and this feels quite sharp to me. So, but we're going to count one, 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 one. And if you do two strokes, make sure you do two strokes on each tooth all the way down and back. And that is, you're, you're doing just a very light, very, just a brush pass. Uh, this is going to give it the final cleanup um, sharpening. <clears throat> and now we go back in the other direction, doing the other teeth. So I went all the way through, I did all my nice cleanup cuts, so this saw should be perfectly sharp now. Um, the block that we used, I'm going to just mark this um, with a CC for cross cut and put down 14 degrees. And that way, next time I need to sharpen a 14 degree rake on a cross cut saw, I have this one for a uh, six inch XS, extra slim. And I put that with the rest of my blocks. I have all kinds of rake angles for, uh, for all, all kinds of saws. I'm sure that I'm gonna have to set the, the I, I'm, I'm gonna have to set the saw again because I, I took off quite a bit of material, so. We'll get to, we'll do that for you right now. <clears throat> we're gonna use the larger set and we're going to, let's start off with a lower number. Um, now, some people uh, mistakenly think that the numbers on the saw set coincide with the uh, numbers of teeth in the saw plate and that's that's not true uh, the number on the saw set is uh how much it bends the teeth and it's all personal preference the uh the more set you put in the saw the larger your kerf is going to be um, so the easier it'll be to steer the saw uh, but at the same time the more work it'll be to push because you're you're taking out more material and what we do is we put this down on the saw and every other tooth, again, making sure that we you know, do the right teeth, we give it a little squeeze and you never want to set teeth in the opposite direction from the way they've been, otherwise the teeth could break off. And then when we're done, we'll, we'll flip this around and go back the other way, squeezing from the other side, bending the teeth this way. Technically, I probably should have done this before I did the final sharpening. You also want to make sure that you are squeezing with uh, even pressure on each tooth so that you're not setting one tooth more than any other because uh, that can cause your saw to drift in one direction. If you happen to notice that your, your saw tends to curve while you're cutting, uh, I'll show you how to take care of that issue. All right, now we're going to head back in this direction, squeezing the opposite teeth in the other, other side. All right, so I finished setting it, and I, I gave it a very light setting, um, almost to the point where you couldn't even see the teeth moving. Um, one of the things with crosscut is they generally don't need a ton of set because unlike rip saws where you're gonna be ripping down, you could be ripping you know six or eight feet of a board, with cross cut, you're generally not gonna be cutting more than 12 or 16 inches of board. So there's very little chance of it pinching or binding or drifting or you know any of the issues. So you can get away with a lot less set 
in a cross-cut saw than you can in a rip cut. Uh, we're going to tighten these down and give it a test run, see how it cuts. All right, bring you over closer. Now, in the last video, you saw me do a test video, a test cut with this saw after we refurbished it, and I did a side-by-side -side comparison with a, shaw, a saw that was sharp already. Um, I'll throw that video back up here just so you can see the difference, and we'll see if it cuts any better now. Start the saw. See how it is to get started. much better. All right, so that was it. We have sharpened this saw nicely and uh, sharply. Now we can put it into full-time use for any cross-cutting applications. And uh, yeah, now, now you should be able to uh, restore any saw, sharpen it, and uh, get cutting. So yeah. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We came, we sawed, we made some dust. Now it's your turn. Get out in your shop, make something, and I'll see you next time.